What a mighty God we serve. What a glorious God. Faithful God, you deserve the highest praise. Almighty God, that is your name. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Blessed be your name. We magnify you. We exalt you. We lift your name on high. El Shaddai. There is no one like you. You are the Lord, the bright and the morning star. The ancient of days, the Holy One of Israel, the great I am that I am. We lift your name on high. We exalt you. What a mighty God we serve. The author of life, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the all-sufficient one. Mighty God, you deserve the praise. There is no one like you. We lift up your name this morning. We exalt you. We magnify you. We glorify your holy name. There is none beside you. We say, blessed be your name forever. What a mighty God we serve. Beloved child of God, we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. You know, we sing that song, what, what a mighty God we serve. We sing the song and we go as far as singing heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Child of God, meditate on that song. He is a mighty God. He is a mighty God. The one that created the earth and his fullness thereof. The almighty one, the one that separated the land from the sea. The one that sets the boundaries of the sea. The one that laid the foundation of the earth upon mighty waters. The one that keeps the sky above us without any pillar holding it and without the sky falling down. The one that created the sun to rule by day and the moon to rule by night. What a mighty God we serve. The one that created just one sunlight to shine all over the whole world. A magnificent God, a glorious God, a reliable God, almighty, all-powerful, all-glorious, everlasting God. From generation to generation, he is God. He is the Lord, there is no other. He is the one that created the destroyer. Child of God, what a mighty God we serve. Satan is not the opposite of God. Our God has no opposite. Our God has no opposite. The mighty one of Israel. The great lover of Israel. The great keeper, the man of war. The warrior himself. He is the Lord. Child of God, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. He is worthy to be served. He is worthy to be respected. He is worthy to be glorified. Beloved child of God, he is worthy for us to lay our lives down before him. He is the Lord. The Bible says heaven and earth adore him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow down before him. The Bible says at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Child of God, are you still standing? Or are you bowing at the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Beloved, there is no one like him. There can never be anyone like him. He is the judge of all. One day we will all see him. We will stand before Jesus face to face. What a glorious day. What a glorious day. The day that we will meet him face to face. On that day we are going to give account of our lives. On that day the reward will be so great. On that day, we will see that our labor in his kingdom was never in vain. On that day, we will see that our reward is, is great. The price we paid on earth is nothing compared to the glorious inheritance that we have. When we will see his glory, oh, what a great day it will be. Beloved, it's good for me and you to pay whatsoever price we have to pay on earth in order to stand before him and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's the glorious voice of the most high God waiting for you, waiting for me. 
His will is not that we will stand before him and hear away from me, you workers of iniquity. That is not his will for us. His will is that child of God, you will embrace your father and it will be heaven at last. What a glorious day. Beloved, forever and ever with the one that laid the foundation of the earth. Forever and ever with the greatest lover of our soul. The one that laid his life for us. Forever and ever with Jesus Christ. Have you thought about it before? Where there is no sickness. Where there is no sorrow. Where child of God. The Shekinah glory of the Lord. Fills us up with the joy and the pleasure of his presence. If you don't want to be there. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to be? Do you want to be where there is gnashing? And grinding of teeth? Do you want to be where the cry never ends, child of God? Do you want to be where the fire is unquenchable? Is that where you want to be? Beloved, we live on earth. Seventy is what God has given to us in his word. Seventy. But by his grace, we are crossing that. Child of God, even if you live to be 200 years old, what is that compared to eternity? What is that compared to eternity? What is that compared to a life that never ends? That even after a billion years, it has not started. Child of God, sit down, think about it. Think about your soul. Is it heaven or is it, or is it hell? Make your choice. If it is heaven you have chosen, tighten your belt. No matter the price, pay it. The price of obedience, pay it. Do whatsoever God wants you to do. Your reward is from everlasting to everlasting. It's worth it at the end of the day, child of God. It's worth it. It's worth it. There is nothing that you can lay down for your Savior that beloved you can compare it and say that, oh, this one is too much. You can't compare whatsoever price you are paying. You can't compare it to your eternity, your eternal reward. Being with Jesus forever. What a glory. What an honor. What a rare privilege. Beloved, have you decided to follow Jesus? Have you decided that come what may, I will pay the price? Have you made up your mind? The truth is that it, all it requires from you is to make up your mind to agree with the Holy Spirit. When you make up your mind, beloved, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, that same power will walk within you, will walk within me, and it will give us the grace to endure to the very end. And so, my beloved brother and my beloved sister, there is nothing on earth that is worth losing eternity with God for. This morning, let us turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. And I will be reading from verse 1 to verse 2. The Bible says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that easily traps or trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding his shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Child of God, did you hear the word of God? The Bible says that we should the Bible says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, the life of faith, beloved, there is a life that is a life of faith. There is a life that is a life of faith. The Christian life is a life of faith, a life of faith in Jesus Christ. It's a life whereby. We are called to live not for ourselves, but to live for the Savior of our soul. That's the call that we have. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, the Bible says, 
My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's the life of a, Christ, of a Christian. That's the Christian life, a life of faith. A life whereby, child of God, you are not living for yourself again. A life whereby it's not about what you want, but about what Jesus wants. A life of living the will of God, not our own will. Child of God, that is the life of faith. That's the life of faith. And that's the life that the word of God encourages us today. That we should strip off every weight that slows us down from living this life. Every weight that slows us down from becoming who God wants us to be, we should lay it aside. That means that we have the power to lay it aside. We have the power to lay it aside. That's the will of God for me and you. That whatsoever we hinder our eternity, whatsoever we stop us from hearing, well done, thou good and faithful servant, let us make up our mind to lay it aside. If the word of God says we should lay it aside, that means the power to lay it aside is given to us already. Beloved, the Bible says, fixing our eyes on Christ, the champion, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. We do it by fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ, the champion of heaven and earth. The one that initiates our faith. Fixing our eyes on him for direction. Fixing our eyes on him for rebuke. Fixing our eyes on him for our perfection. Fixing our eyes on him for strength. For grace. For everything. Fixing our eyes on him. That's the will of the father. That my eyes and your eyes be focused on Jesus Christ. That's the will of God. Why? Because the master is speaking. The master is directing. The master is leading the way. And in order for us to be able to follow him and accomplish his purpose on earth in our lives, beloved, we need to focus on him. We need to focus on him. But child of God, the Bible says that we should lay aside the weight that slows us down. Do you know that one of the weights that slows us down is what God is calling our attention to today? The weight of distraction. The weight of distraction. Child of God, the weight of distraction is slowing many of us down from the call that God has placed within our hearts. Distraction is taking us from that principal thing that the Lord has called us to accomplish. Beloved, do you know what distraction is? Distraction is the process of diverting the attention of an individual or a group from a desired area of focus. That means that anything that takes us away from the focus we are supposed to have. The Bible says looking up to Jesus. Anything that takes our focus from what Jesus is saying. That takes our focus from the will of God for us. That takes our focus from doing that thing that Jesus has asked us to do. Is our distraction. Is our distraction. That is the weight. That the master wants me and you to take off today. We have the power to take it off. Distraction. Child of God, can you turn your Bibles to Luke? Please read for us Luke chapter 21 from verse 34 to verse 38, please. Luke 21, the verse 34 to 38. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this world. And so that they come upon you on a ways. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. 37. And in that daytime he was teaching in the temple. And at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives, 
And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. Amen. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, child of God. The word of God in New Living Translation of Luke chapter 21, where we read from verse 34 to verse 38 says, Watch out, don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. That's the word of our eternal God. He says what? Watch out. Watch out. We need to watch out for those things that pollute our heart and come to distract us from our eternal purpose. We need to watch out. The Bible said, don't let that day catch you unaware. That glorious day, child of God, don't let it catch you unaware. Can't you see that many are departing earth to eternity even without preparation? They are people that are destined to die today, but they don't know. Today they will die. They don't know. Child of God. The day that will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Let us not allow that day to catch us unprepared. Let us not allow ourselves to be unprepared. Beloved child of God, the Bible says, watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unawares like a trap. For that day will come upon everyone living on the earth. There is a day that will come upon each and every one of us. It shouldn't meet us unprepared, child of God. There is a trap set by the kingdom of darkness to cause eternity to meet us unprepared. Child of God, the Bible says we should watch out for that trap. It says keep alert at all times. Keep alert. That's the counsel of God. Let us stop being comfortable with a little sleep and a little slumber here and there. The word of God says, keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. He said that you might be strong enough. Keep alert. Pray so that you will be strong enough to escape the horror. You see, there are horrors and we can see there are horrors on earth. But in order for us to be able to escape and stand before the seat, judgment seat of Christ, blameless child of God, we need to be alert. We need to be watchful. The Bible says every day Jesus went to the temple to teach and each evening he returned to spend the night on the mountain of olives. Child of God, look at the life of Jesus Christ. Every day he went to the, to the temple to teach and every evening he returned to spend the night on the mount of olives. Can you see the focused life of Jesus Christ? Every day he was focused, doing what the father has asked him to do. He was so focused. And that's the same life that the Lord has called me and you to live. Not a careless life, but a focused life. Every day he was on his assignment. He knew the reason why he was on earth and he was on point. He was on point. Every day he was on the mountaintop, the presence of God, where he heard from his father, renewed his strength, interceded, prayed. If Jesus prayed on earth, who am I? Who are you? In order to stay focused and to hit the target. Child of God is the will of God that me and you lay aside every weight because truly they are weights. They are weights. Those things that come to distract us from our focus. Those things that come to take us away from what the Father is requiring from us. Child of God, in Proverbs chapter 4, and I read verse 25, it says, Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Did you hear that? It said, Look straight ahead. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. The Bible says, mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. 
Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. These are the counsel that God has for me and you. These are the eternal words of God to guard our life on earth. This is the will of God for me and you. That we stay focused. That we fix our eyes on what lies before us. Each and every one of us have something that lies before us. And what lies before us? The will of God. The purpose of God. The agenda that God has for us. The reason why we are on earth. It lies before us. Child of God, are we keeping a straight path? Are we walking on our path? Are we on our lane? Are we in the will of God? It will do us so much good for us to check our walk against the spirit of distraction. It will do us so much good because God is revealing that many of us are not focusing. God is revealing that many of us are distracted. God is revealing that we have allowed the cares of this world to sweep away our concentration from him. God is revealing that we are not focusing on him. We are not pursuing the things that have eternal value. Child of God, what you are killing yourself day and night for, does it have eternal value? Will it withstand the test of time? Child of God, what you are pursuing day and night, I am so busy. God understands the reason why some of us, we are saying, oh, I don't have time to sit with the Lord. I don't have time. And my job is so demanding. Child of God, that thing you are doing, when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, will it pass through the fire and give you a reward? Will it? Listen to God's word. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 12 to verse 15, this is the word of God. Beloved, think about it. The Bible says, anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, and, or straw. But on the judgment day, the fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, the builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through the walls of flames. Child of God, we are all building. The lives that we are living on earth, we are building. Everything we are doing, we are building for eternity. Child of God, some of us are building with gold, some with silver, some with jewels, some with wood, some with hay, some with straw. The Bible says on judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. And so, child of God, what we are running and chasing after on earth, when it goes through fire, will it be able to withstand the test of time? Will it be able to go through the refining fire and come out as gold? Child of God, think about it. The Bible says fire will show if a person's work has any value. Fire will show. And so if we are building with hay and building with wood, if it goes through fire, child of God, it will only be the ashes that will be left. It will only be the ashes. And the Bible says that we will receive a reward based on what? The work that we are doing. The, what we are building on it. Child of God, do you want to labor in vain? Do you want to labor in vain? Some of us, we are laboring in vain. In vain because what we are pursuing has no eternal reward. Child of God, let us not labor in vain. Let us do the will of God. Please turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 21. And let us hear what God has for us from that place. Please read for us Matthew 21 from verse 33 to verse 41, please. Matthew 21, the verse 3 to 41. And if any man says aught unto you, Ye shall say, The Lord had need of them, and straight away he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the fowl of an ass. 
And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude Praise spread the their Lord. garments. Praise the Lord. Please excuse me. Matthew chapter 21. And I'll be reading, sorry, from verse 33 to verse 41, please. There's a little mix up there. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 21, and I'm reading from verse 33. It said, now listen to another story. A certain land owner planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. Then he leased the vineyard to, to tenant farmers and moved to another country. At the time of the grape harvest, he sent his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the, but the farmers grabbed his servants, beat one, killed one, stoned another. For the landowner sent a larger group of his servants to collect for him, but the results were the same. Finally, the owner sent his son, thinking, surely they will respect my son. But when the tenant farmer saw his son coming, they said to one another, here comes the heir to this estate. Come on, let's kill him and get the estates for ourselves. So they grabbed him and dragged him out of the vineyard and murdered him. When the owner of the vineyard returned, Jesus asked, what do you think he will do to those farmers? The religious leaders replied, he will put the wicked men to horrible death and lease the vineyard to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. Child of God, did you read the word of God? The parable about the evil farmers? Child of God, Jesus speaking prophetically and telling us what is happening. That God has planted a vineyard, done everything that is required. Has Jesus not shed his blood? Has he not paid the great price and left us with a great assignment, left us with a great instruction, that left us with a great example that clearly shows us that he did not come to do his will, but to do the will of the Father. When he was living, he left us with a great commission. He told us to go and make disciples of all nations. He taught us, child of God, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and do the will of God. That is the reason why we are on earth. The owner of the vineyard did everything, put everything that needs to make his work fertile. Child of God, God created me and you in his image, put us on earth for a specific purpose, for a specific assignment. Child of God, we are like these farmers working for the owner of this farm land. Child of God, he comes to check how is the work going? From time to time, the master comes to check on us. The Holy Spirit nudges us. He sends people our way in order, child of God, to check the condition of the assignment he has placed in our hands. But child of God, do you know that many of us are like these farmers here? Angry at God. Angry at the work. Beloved, many of us. God is revealing that some of us have become angry with God. And because of it, we have neglected our call. And even when God tries to get our attention, we react like the workers in the field. We react like the workers in the field. Child of God, the Bible makes us to understand that now listen to another story. Matthew 21 from verse 33. A certain landowner planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built out, built a lookout tower. Then he leased his vineyard to tenant farmers. Child of God, what has God leased to you? What has God committed into your hands? As long as we are children of God. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, child of God. Talent has been given unto us. Grace has been revealed, has been released unto us. Assignment has been committed into our hands. 
if we sit with the Holy Spirit every day, the same way Jesus went to the mountaintop every day, we will know our call. He knew his call. That he was to go to the temple every day. He knew his call that many will meet him for deliverance. Many will meet him for a touch. He knew that he had disciples to train. He knew that he had people that he was sent to to heal and to deliver. He knew he had a message for the Pharisees. He knew he had a parent to take care of. He knew his call, child of God. And so he didn't live a wasted life. Child of God, what kind of life are we living as children of the living God? Because the word of God makes it clear that there are this group of people that God have leased his vineyard to, but they are angry sets of people. And so whenever the word of God comes, whenever the correction of God comes, whenever God comes to show the way of the work, they close their ears. They don't want to hear. Beloved, what did Jesus say? He asked a question in verse 40. When the owner of the vineyard returns, Jesus asked, what do you think he will do to these farmers? Jesus is going to come back and he's asking, what do you think will happen to careless farmers? What do you think will happen to those that have assignment but were distracted from it? What do you think will happen to those that are rebelling against the owner of the vineyard? Child of God, the Bible says the religious leaders replied, they themselves, man have judged it already. To judge God righteous, he says he will put the wicked men to a horrible death and leave the vineyard to others who will give him a share of the crop after each harvest. Child of God, the Lord is expecting a harvest. The Lord is expecting a harvest. The Lord is expecting fruitfulness from my life and from your life. The Lord does not do careless things. He has a purpose for putting me and you on it. And he has an expectation. Child of God. If we are angry and we rebel against God, what do we think will happen at the end? Man has already judged it. Man has already judged it. Beloved, are you angry at the Lord? You are so angry. God didn't give me a husband because of that. God is on his own and I am on my own. Are you angry? Oh, God didn't give me a child. After all I've done for God, you have done something for God. Oh, may we humble ourselves before the Lord. May we humble ourselves before the Lord. And see ourselves like warm Jacob. Warm, warm, warm. You know a warm? It just crawls mercilessly on the ground. Life, child of God, is like a flower. One moment is here, another moment is gone. Let us be careful. Beloved, let us be careful, child of God. For those of us that are angry at God, the master, the father, our loving savior has a word for us today. Proverbs chapter 3 and I'm reading verse 11 to verse 12. He said, my child, don't reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. Beloved, the, the, the workers in that vineyard, they were angry. And they, they, the messages that the master sent to them, they rejected the message. They were angry because of something. They had their reasons. But child of God, the word of God says, don't be upset. God has a reason for everything. Don't allow anger come between you and God. You will only be the one to suffer it. The father don't want to lose me. He don't want to lose you. And so child of God, when he sends his discipline, we shouldn't reject it. We shouldn't be upset. Some of us are upset because God is, is, is disciplining us. Some of us we are upset because we are going through the refining fire. We have become angry people. Child of God, this morning, let us cast away that weight of distraction, of being angry at God and focus on what is before us. And focus on the race that is set before us. Do you know why we must focus? Child of God, do you know why? Do you know that the time is coming whereby we can no longer walk again? In John chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 4 to verse 7. The Bible says we must quickly carry out the tax assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming 
and then no one can walk. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground and made a mud with the saliva and spread a mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, go wash yourself at the pool of Siloam. Siloam means scent. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. Child of God, look at the word of God. That we must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. We have, a, we have, we have an assignment. We have a task. And the will of God is that we quickly carry it out. Because a time is coming whereby we cannot walk again, child of God. He said night is coming when no one can walk. And so work is not forever. What he has committed into our hands, child of God, is not forever and ever that we have to do it. So let us quickly carry out that task. Jesus said, while I am here on, in the world, I am the light of the world. Child of God, are you not in this world? You are in this world, I am in this world. We are still part of those living on earth. And as long as we are on earth, child of God, the Bible says we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. And Jesus led that example by showing us the reason why he was there. What happened? There was a blind man. That blind man did not return the same way. Jesus ministered to that man right there and he received his sight because what? He is on earth to do the will of God. He did that by showing us that we are on earth for a purpose. That, other, uh, that men may see the light of Jesus through us. And so child of God, what are we doing with our lives? This morning, it is the will of God that me and you, we close the door of distraction. Whatsoever is distracting us from our purpose. Let us learn something from Nehemiah this morning. As I read for us, Nehemiah chapter, chapter 6, I am reading from verse 1 to verse 4. Sambalat, Tobiah, Gashem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall and that no gaps remain, though we had not yet set up the doors in the gates. So Sambalat, Gashem, sent a message asking me to meet them in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But I realized they were plotting to harm me. So I replied by sending this message to them. I am engaged in a great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop walking to come and meet you? Four times they sent the same message and each time I gave the same reply. Child of God, let us learn from Nehemiah this morning. Nehemiah had an assignment that God gave him to rebuild the broken walls of Jerusalem. Child of God, me and you have the same assignment to rebuild broken walls, to rebuild child of God. Things that are collapsed on earth, that child of God, the purpose of our being on earth, child of God, is to give life to it, is to build it up, is to do the work of our father. Nehemiah had that assignment. Nehemiah knew his purpose. Nehemiah knew what God wanted him to do, child of God. Nehemiah was doing the work. He said, I had finished rebuilding the walls. And that no gaps remain, though we had not yet set up the doors and in the gate. That means that he has made progress with the work. He is busy at work, child of God. He has made prog progress. Beloved, what happened? He says, Sambala, Tobiah, Gashem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall and that no gaps remain. Though we had not yet set up the doors and the gates. So Sambalat and Gashem sent a message asking me to meet them at one of the villages in the plain of Ono. Distraction. Distraction came the way of Nehemiah. The same way distraction comes our way. We are surrounded by so many people that don't know their call, don't know their vision, don't know their purpose, why they are on earth. And so their assignment is to go about distracting those that are doing what God asked them to do. Child of God, if you are building the walls that God has committed into your hands, don't allow anyone distract you from it. Don't allow anyone distract you from it. Because their distraction will bring harm. 
Nehemiah says something, but I realize they were plotting to harm me. Distraction will harm us, child of God. That's why God says, lay aside every weight. Nehemiah knew his weight. Sambalat was a weight. The people around him that distracted him from his focus. That were calling him to other businesses that had nothing to do with the business that God has committed into his hands. Child of God, he had a reply for distraction. He says, he said in verse 3, So I replied by sending this message to them. I am engaged in a great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop walking to come and meet with you? Beloved, today is a day for us to look at our distraction face to face and speak the word of truth to it and discard every distraction on our path, child of God. Nehemiah looked at his distraction and Nehemiah said, why should I leave this great work? This great work, this great project that God has committed into my hands. Why should I leave it? Child of God, the great work that God has committed into your hands. Why should you leave it? Why should I leave it? The Bible says four times they send the same message. And each time I gave them the same reply. What a man of focus. Child of God, how are we responding to our distractions? Four times they came. Nehemiah gave the same reply. Nehemiah gave the same reply. In verse 9, he went, he said they were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued the work with even greater determination. Can you see a man of focus? Can you see a man that is called to fulfill a glorious mission and he's set to do it, child of God? Can you see a man that could identify his distractions and put distractions where it belonged? Beloved child of God, can you see a man that did not allow anything to discourage him? Child of God, what is discouraging you? What is discouraging you? What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses soul? Child of God, what is in the world that is distracting you? What is in the world that is distracting me? Nehemiah did not allow himself to be distracted. He said, so I continued the work with even greater determination. Can we please go back and continue the work that God has placed in our hands with greater, greater and greater determination? Child of God, can we stop being Sambalat, Tobias and Gashem in the lives of other people, distracting them from their calls? Because some of us, we are Nehemiahs, some of us, we are Sambalat, we are Tobiah. We have left our lane. And we have become distractions in other people's life. Beloved, one day we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. What, is, what will Sambalat and Tobiah say when they stand before God? What will they say? When it, their eyes become clear that it wasn't about Nehemiah, it's not Nehemiah's walls, it was God that was building. What was their role in the project that God was doing? What did they come to do? God's building. Sambalat and Tobiah, they walked against what God was building. Sambalat will stand, Nehemiah will stand before the same God to give account. Sambalat, a life of no vision, a life that had no eternal mission. What will he tell God when he stands before God? What will Gashem say? What about Nehemiah when he stands before God? What about Nehemiah that didn't allow spoilers to spoil what God committed into his hands? Beloved, think about it today. Are you a Nehemiah or are you a Sambalat? We are playing a role in God's project. God is building, child of God. God is building. God is working on it. What role are we playing in what God is building? Are we helping God to build? Are we co-laborers with Christ or are we distracting God's building? Child of God. Think about it. But one thing we must know today is that we should not allow the enemy take us away from our call. We should not allow the enemy just cheat us like that. Beloved, don't allow Satan to just cheat you out of your eternal reward like that. 
Don't allow the cares of the world to steal your eternity from you. Don't allow bitterness, child of God, to steal your glorious destiny. Beloved, once again, I'm reading Genesis chapter 17. And I will be reading from verse 1 to 8. The Bible says, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. Let me just take that verse. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. Child of God, in the days of Abraham, at 99 years, he was still strong. In our own day, child of God, your 99 years old is today. Your 99 years old is today, child of God. There is no more time again. At 99, what time do we have left? Injury time, these are the end times. These are the last days. We are at our 99 years old. And beloved, what is the master saying to me and you this morning? He says, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Think about it. The Lord is saying, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. That is who he is. El Shaddai, God Almighty, Almighty, All Powerful, All Sufficient, God of Dominion and Authority. The champion of it all, the one before whom we will stand to give account of our life. This morning he is coming to us again and he is saying, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. That's the word that he has for me and you. That we are called, he says, serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you. By which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abraham fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What more? I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abraham. Instead, you will be called Abraham. For you will be the father of many nations. And I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them. I will redeem my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And I will give the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner to you and your descendants. It will be their possession forever and I will be their God. Child of God, it is the same word to you and to me from our eternal father this morning. Renewing our covenant to obey God. Renewing our covenant to do the will of God. Child of God, the master has come. When he came to Abraham, Abraham did not stand at his feet to talk when God was talking. Because Abraham met him as God Almighty. Abraham humbled himself and fell face down to the ground to hear what the father is saying. And so, child of God, let us humble ourselves today and fall face down to the ground at the feet of the Savior to hear what the master is saying, to hear his message of the hour to each and every one of us and agree to enter that covenant. Beloved, let God change our name today as he changed the name of Abraham to Abraham. Let God change our name from rebellious children to obedient children. Children that tremble at the word of the Father. Children that run with the commands of, of the Father. Beloved, the will of God is to make me and you not just fruitful, but extremely fruitful. But extremely fruitful. If he did it in the life of Abraham, he can do it in your own life. And he has come to do it. All we need to do is to agree with him. When we agree with him, we will see the glory of God in the land of the living. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
What a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a marvelous God. Oh, we connect back to Him today. We connect back to Him today. Oh, Master, he is stretching out His hands. Let us humble ourselves before Him and reconnect to the call, reconnect to the task. Take away every distraction today. Take away every distraction and refocus again. Refocus again. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. The cares of this world. Those things that slow us down. Let us keep it aside. Let us commit our heart to the Father afresh. 